Welcome to today's webinar series event sponsored by KPI Partners. My name is Jeremiah Johnson and I'll be introducing you to today's session. Uh, we have over 300 reg registered for today's session, so let's, let's get right into it. Today, we will be hosting an event in our webinar series called Performance Tuning Oracle's BI Applications. The objective of today's session is to understand how organizations can combat the demands for lightning fast speeds from their dashboard users with some simple performance tuning techniques. For those of you who may not know, KPI Partners is the most experienced implementation consultancy in the area of Oracle Business Intelligence and Hyperion Enterprise Performance Management. In addition to strategic consulting services, KPI offers training and education through KPI University and exclusive pre-built solutions for Oracle Business Intelligence. Please check out the latest thinking area of our website at kpipartners.com for all kinds of helpful content, case studies, videos, archived webinars, free ebooks, and more. For today's webinar, we are pleased to be joined by Jeff McQuig from KPI Partners. Jeff is an Oracle ace and senior architect at KPI Partners who is widely considered to be one of the top experts in the world on the Oracle BI platform. He has been involved with over 35 Siebel Analytics, OBIEE, and Oracle BI applications projects in some capacity since 2002. His development efforts have included complex security models, custom data marts, BI apps extensions, dashboards, and highly complex metrics. Jeff is also a well-known speaker who is often invited to speak at industry events such as Oracle Open World, Kaleidoscope, Collaborate, Collaborate, and other BI forums. His thought leadership contributions can be regularly found within the KPI Partners blog and is part of this KPI Partners webinar series. In his free time, uh, Jeff is also a beer enthusiast and contributor to BrewPalace.com, where he has reviewed thousands of different brews from 77 different countries. If you want to find out more about KPI Partners or how we can assist your organization with enhancing performance within the Oracle BI applications, please contact us through our website at kpipartners.com. I will now bring in Jeff from Southern California to kick off today's presentation. Jeff, uh, we just had another six inches of snow dumped on us in Minneapolis yesterday. Uh, how's the weather in San Diego? Well, Jeremiah, thanks. Uh, as I was telling you a little uh, while ago, I've actually been sunburned twice so far in San Diego this year, so the weather's been pretty good to start off the year. All right. Well, the floor is all yours. We're looking forward to it. Okay, thanks. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, we're going to talk about a concept called the performance layer today. Um, and it's something that um, maybe a lot of folks aren't necessarily familiar with. Uh, it's uh, a concept and a set of uh, ideas and, and physical objects that we can actually build inside of our database to help our query and reporting performance out uh, for OBI. Um, whether that's uh, some dashboards or whether it's ad hoc reporting, whatever the case may be, we're going to pretty much focus on query performance. We're not really going to address any kind of ETL performance. Uh, another thing is there's many, many different things that go into the performance picture. We're not going to dig into a lot of the details of some of the technical aspects of it, nor are we going to get into interesting things like Axolytics or uh, Hyperion S-Base or anything like that. We're going to talk about some pretty basic standard kinds of concepts that you can actually build inside your existing system whether it's a BI apps application or whether it's a custom-built data warehouse. Now, the reason I put together this uh, presentation is because I've actually been doing quite a bit of this over the last six to eight months on a variety of customers on a variety of platforms dealing with multiple BI apps modules and some custom uh, implementations as well. And so I see a lot of the same things, and I've started to develop a repeatable process for actually taking reports that are just absolutely uh, underperforming user expectations and getting them well within expectations, in fact, sometimes exceeding them. And so we're going to start off by introducing this performance layer with some of the concepts and theories and things that contribute to poor performance and, therefore, uh, what to do to avoid that. We're actually going to get into some of the, the technical aspects of how, what it looks like, how to actually build it. I've got a couple of SQL statements in here that will kind of show you what it might look like. And so you can see that it's actually not that uh, scary to build. Uh, we're actually going to pop into the OBI RPD and show, hey, okay, OK, you've built all these things, but what does that mean to the OBI side? Uh, how do I map that in there? And then, and then we'll take a look at, uh, it's not just technology here. There's actually implementation considerations. So if you're an architect or a project manager, uh, how much effort is this? What are some things to look out for? What are some of the pros and cons of doing this? So you have a, a nice round picture. And of course, we'll end up with some Q&A. Okay, so well, let's first introduce it. Um, so who is this? Uh, this I guess you're all on this, this topic here, this session today, because you are interested in your query performance of your uh, reports and dashboards. And so uh, typically that's a very common uh, kind of uh, concern that customers have. Um, it's, many customers don't have it because they simply have a small data set or they have low, us low user counts or whatever the case may be. But the things that we see that are typically drivers for customers being 
um, not happy with their query performance are those who have potentially large data volumes. That's an obvious one, right? If you have hundreds of millions of records in your financial, uh, your financial tables or your order tables, uh, that's going to slow you down versus a smaller data set. Um, we also noticed that um, sometimes when you are installing a BI application, you have to do a lot of customizations. Why? Because your requirements are just different than uh, what Oracle provides out of the box. So you have to customize and enhance and add to those tables. And as we'll get into some of the concepts, adding is what slows us down quite a bit. Uh, this is something that we've seen quite a bit. Sometimes you've had an integrator in there who's actually not done a really good job of bringing in and designing for performance. And so they may, some of the decisions they've made and the implementations may not be actually the best. They may be pretty bad in actually causing some of your problems. Um, other customers have very aggressive performance targets. I need everything on every single page to come back in, in five to ten seconds all the time. Anything worse than that is unacceptable. And so that actually in a, in a relational OLAP kind of environment is not necessarily the easiest thing to, choose, to achieve. Um, finally, um, uh, slow hardware. Um, you know, uh, performance comes from a, a kind of a handshake agreement between design software and actual hardware. And so sometimes uh, your deployment is on a slower hardware environment and your hands are tied. You can't, you can't really do much about it. You're on a shared storage area network, a fan, and the latency is bad, but tough luck, you still got to make the thing work uh, to your users' expectations. So that may be one of the causes here. And then finally, although this, uh, the topic of this uh, webinar is performance tuning Oracle's BI applications, the same exact concepts apply for a custom data warehouse. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the differences between an application, a BI application, and a data warehouse. But typically, if all you have is a classic data warehouse, you are going to run into performance problems. That a performance layer is, is the prescription for that. Okay. Uh, as I said, this is primarily for the BI apps. Uh, so it, it works for the out-of-the-box stars that you may have purchased. Uh, it's also for any custom stars. Most customers do have some form of new star that they've added into the BI apps. It also works, as I mentioned, for the custom built warehouses. Uh, and note, this is not an Oracle only kind of scenario. I've actually done a lot of this work on SQL Server. Some of the terms and, and concepts are, are slightly different, but uh, the skill set translates from Oracle to SQL Server very, very well. I am by no means a SQL Server expert, and I was able to get some really good performance gain using these exact same techniques. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about some concepts as to, to why you may have a performance problem. And the first thing is uh, we want to think, be thinking about traveling light. Uh, a big wide table carries a lot more data than you're actually going to need in your dashboard. Uh, if you think about a typical customer table in the BI applications, there's well over 100 fields in there. Yes, many of them are empty, but many of them are not. And the bigger and wider a table is, the fatter it is, in other words, the slower it's going to be. And so your dashboards will typically use only a few of those fields. Uh, think about your, uh, again, you own a customer, you probably only have two or three fields that you most commonly use in a dashboard, whether it's in a filter, a prompt, a column selector, a row header, uh, those kinds of things. So what we really want to think of there is the difference between the, the, the images on the screen here between a big truck and a sports car. Smaller is going to be faster. It simply has less weight uh, to move around. We need to make sure our designs are, are effective for performance. We want to start, uh, when we think about performance, we want to start with clear design goals. If we have other priorities in our designs, we're not going to be as fast as we could be. And again, the images here are perfect for this because the image on the left shows we need traffic and boat to go to handle this bridge, whereas the image on the right doesn't have to worry about that. No speed limit on the bridge on the right. So what might some of those other uh, priorities be? Well, it could be ETL uh, issues, right? Maybe we, we build one large table because it's faster to build it than two smaller tables or three smaller tables. Uh, and with the BI applications, Oracle is very interested in time to deploy, right, so that they uh, can deliver on the buy versus build promise. And so what Oracle will do is they will bring in more fields into you, the base BIS tables than reality you need. And so what we want to focus on is just pulling the ones out and focusing only on a design for performance. We're not going to worry about ETL performance and not having too many objects. We're going to make sure that we optimize for usage. Okay. Another, uh, just hitting on that topic a little bit more, if we were to, if our, if our application was we need to build a uh, device that will carry hot coffee for us in the car when we drive to work, well, a regular glass isn't really the best solution for that. What we really need to do is tailor a solution for how it's actually going to be used. In other words, design it for those use cases, right? And so we're going to design our underlying data structures for exactly how our dashboards and reports are used. 
it's effectively going to be a very top-down kind of approach as opposed to a bottom-up or a more generic kind of approach. And this is actually a concept that, uh, that I, some people kind of struggle with a little bit. Oh, it's a data warehouse. It's just supposed to contain all my data and, and just throw it in there and I can do whatever I want with it. Well, that's true, but your dashboarding environment is very different than a data warehouse. Your dashboarding environment is an actual application. It happens to be a BI application. Whether or not you purchased it from Oracle or whether you build your own, it's still an application to the end users, isn't it? And so any application, uh, whether you're building a transactional system or a sports car or a, a coffee mug, you do that top-down data model design based off of how that application actually works. And so the exact same concepts apply for a BI system. Okay, so that's I want, want that to be clear. This is a BI system. It's not necessarily a dashboard. The two are similar but different, and I'll explain a little bit about those differences. Okay, so when we think about top-down design, uh, just kind of a preview here on some of the attributes of the performance layer. We're going to have pre-built logic. In other words, if there's complex calculations that we're doing, whether it's a, a complex metric or a filtering or a, a bucketing, we want to pre-build that logic so that we don't have to do it at query time. We want to make sure that it's, it's everything is optimized for the usage. Uh, what that also translates into is we want to have a clean star model. We do not want to have snowflakes. Snowflakes are, are poor for actual query performance in an Oracle and SQL Server and DB2 kind of system. Not so much for other systems, but for regular uh, standard databases, that's the case. We want to make sure we reduce our data weight. Right? We don't want to bring anything more than we need. We only want to carry exactly what we need into our performance layer. Uh, we also, part of the usage here, where does a lot of our usage comes from both the dashboard design, you know, prompts and filters and reports and whatnot, but it also comes from the OBI repository, the RPD, the, the BI server layer, and some of the logic that's built into that. Uh, for example, there may be some specialized filtering that removes a certain data set out of a very large table. So why are we doing that at query time all the time? Let's go ahead and pre-build that so that we don't have to do that every single time. It's already done for. Done for. So we want to match. We want our tables. We want to match the design and the implementation in our existing RPD. Let's talk a little bit about this. This is The performance layer is not a new concept. It's been around for a while. What you're looking at here is part of Oracle's data warehouse reference architecture. This is taken from the most recent one they did back in January of 2010. Uh, and this is a kind of an industry standard sort of uh, way to think about a data warehouse and all your sources and how you get it in and then how you actually use it on the right, how you actually get that information out. And so if you look here in, in the green box, that's our foundation layer. Right? That's your data warehouse layer. If you see there, it says process neutral 3NF model. Well, that's true for uh, a, a, a normal kind of a data warehouse. The BI apps, it's not necessarily true. Right? The BI apps uses an actual star, but it's the concepts are very similar. There's a lot of information in the BI apps data model, just as there is in your actual data warehouse. We don't need all of that, number one. And number two, it's not always exactly perfectly optimized to how you're going to use it. So the, J the basic architecture uh, identifies in yellow there an access and performance layer. And this is where you see we build an embedded data mark, materialized views, uh, CTAS. Those are the things that we're actually going to be talking about. Uh, uh, an access and performance layer could also be an F-based cube. Okay? It does not have to be a relational uh, data model. And so what we actually do here is you see we build this embedded data mark or this performance layer uh, from our actual source um, data warehouse or BI apps tables. Let's talk a little bit about, to give you another perspective on what that might look like, I'm going to use a, a fun little analogy here. Uh, let's say you've got a, you just built a nice pool out in the backyard and summertime's coming up and you want to spend some time out there with the family, uh, but you know, we don't want to have to keep going back into the kitchen to get some Coca-Cola to cool ourselves off in the summer. So what do we do? We, we install a mini fridge out, in, out by the, in the patio by the pool. And this mini fridge is designed pretty much only to handle Coca-Cola or cans of soda. Uh, and so it doesn't have to handle milk, it doesn't have to handle eggs or last night's leftovers. So we can actually make some design decisions about that. And so it can be a much smaller refrigerator. We don't want to bring the, the big kitchen fridge out there, too big, too heavy, way more than we need. And so we build a nice targeted performance mini fridge out by our pool. And so what do we do? Well, we build that new data model, the fridge. We copy data or coax from the BI apps or the main fridge into this performance mini fridge. And we bring only what we need. Again, if we don't need uh, you know, whipped cream out there, we don't bring whipped cream. 
Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, point number four there, my analogy breaks down a little bit. We want to do some denormalization and pre-calculation. I'm not sure exactly how that plays in with the fridge concept. Uh, but uh, anyway, the net here is, we, the takeaway is we want to optimize to how we're actually using it. So that little fridge right there, I can put in a lot of Coke. I can get to it very quickly, and it doesn't need to worry about anything else. Okay. So just a quick summary here, some, a few takeaways about this performance layer, about some of the concepts. Right. So this is an industry standard architecture. This is not some wild and crazy thing that, that Jeff McQuig and KPI partners are inventing. No, this is a standard kind of approach. Okay. It's not necessarily known by a lot of folks, however, when they're, when they're beginning their BI systems. Right. We want to design, we, our design is driven by our actual report performance. Right. It's not necessarily concerned about ETL performance. It's not concerned about uh, how quickly you can build it. It's, it's there to get reports to run as fast as they can. We want to travel light. Right. Another thing is, I, I, did, I may have skipped over this slightly, but we don't really want to spend a lot of time altering the BI apps or our data warehouse model. They're basically fine the way they are. Let's leave them as they, as they are. Perhaps you can do some additional tuning here and there with some indexes and whatnot, and you should do that. But let's not spend a lot of time uh, re-architecting the underlying data model because it has other needs and other purposes. Let's build something on top of it. As we'll find out, it's actually much faster to do that anyway.